Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem bitwise XOR of all pairings. And I really, really like this problem today because it involves my favorite subject, which is math. And by the way, I think I'm finally going to make that discrete math for coding interviews video I've been talking about, I think for like years. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Before we get into this, I want you to know that math is not a formula. It's not something you memorize and then just plug in a bunch of numbers and stuff like that, even though that's how math is taught, I think, by most teachers. But math really is a language. It's a way of thinking. And so that's what I want to convey to you in this uh, problem. The idea here is very simple. We're given two arrays. I'll draw them here. So we have two, one, three. And we also have 10, 2, 5, 0. What they say is we want to, I mean, the way they word it is kind of weird. They say we want to create a third array. And each value in that array is going to be a pair from the first and second array. So like this is going to be one pair. This is going to be two pairs, three pairs, four pairs. So that's all the pairs involving this element. And then we'll do this and that and this and that and then same thing with this guy so i'll just draw it for you like that you can count there's three elements in this array four elements in this array so there's going to be 12 different pairs and so this array is going to have 12 values now each pair i didn't mention is going to be the xor of the two values so 2 xor with 10. we don't really need to know too much about the bitwise xor for this problem, but we will need to know a couple properties of it to optimize the solution from brute force to optimal. But those properties are pretty simple. I'll mention them when we actually need them. So then you can imagine this array will have 12 values, and then each of those values we actually want to XOR together. And then the result of that is going to be what we return. In this problem, it's going to be 13. So now you tell me if we were to do the simulation, like the brute force way to do this and actually create this array and then do the XORs, what exactly would the time complexity be? Well, if this one is of length n, this one is m, the time complexity is going to be n times m because we're getting every single pair. And then we're going through that array one more time. So you could add like a constant term two here, but that's not going to change the complexity. So we'll just leave this as is. I guess I'll show you the brute force code for that because it's so trivial to code up. But honestly, I would encourage you to try to code it up yourself. Don't be lazy. That's how you learn. I mean, you can watch me code up the brute force, but if you already know how to do it, there's no point in watching me do it when you could code it yourself or you could draw out something like this by yourself. Even if that means you watch less of my videos, I promise you that's how you're actually going to learn. So you can see here, I coded up the brute force and it did give me a time limit exceeded. And you can see the way I coded it up, I actually didn't create a separate array. Why didn't I do that? What I did is I generated every pair, I took the XOR of those pairs, and then I XORed it with the result, which I initially set to zero. Why did I do this? Well, it's because I know a few properties about how XOR works. So let me show them to you. What we're saying by creating this big formula is this. Let me kind of draw it out for you. I'm going to give these some generic names. I'm going to say this is N1, N2, N3. This is M1, M2, M3, etc. So what we want to do is do every pair. So like one XOR would be N1 XOR with M1. And then maybe another pair would be N1 XOR with M2. I'll draw out a few more of these, but I'm not going to do the whole formula. I would encourage you to do so if you don't understand it, but it is kind of tedious, so I don't blame you if you don't. We'll also have like N2, then XORed with a few of them. I didn't do the N1 XORed with M4, but again, you can imagine it's there. So these are like the individual terms that are going to be in the third array. And then among all of these, we want to XOR them together. So take this, XOR it with the guy down here, XOR it with the guy down here, and then just keep doing that. And if we did that with all of these, we would end up with the final result. So this is why I didn't actually take all of these terms and add it to the array and then XOR it. I just XOR it as we went because it's not going to change the overall formula. The formula is going to be the same. And the reason I initialized my result 
to zero and then XOR these terms with zero is because of how XOR works. If you take zero and XOR it with any number, no matter what it is, the result is always going to be N, and that's because of what XOR is. If I take some generic number with some zeros and ones and I have a zero down here, XOR basically means exclusive or so if one of the bits only one of the bits is one then the result is going to be one if that's not the case it's going to be zero so here one of the bits is one so then we put a one if both of them were one like both of these are one the result would be zero so that's how xor works and another thing to know about xor is if i were to take any two numbers let's say uh, x and xor it with x i'm going to get zero in the output can you tell me why because just think about it if i have something like this and i have the same exact number of course they're not going to be different in any of the spots so of course the result is going to be all zeros in the output so knowing that is actually enough how are we going to simplify our solution and optimize it from being brute force to more optimal it's going to definitely involve some xor properties and specifically i don't think the intuition is hard to arrive at that possibly we can use xor properties to simplify this big formula and somehow make it much smaller and keep the result the exact same so that's exactly what we're going to try to do. Now let's think about it. Obviously, there are going to be repeated terms. N1, for example, how many times is it going to show up in the output formula? Well, clearly, if I'm XORing it with four different values, it's going to show up four times in the output formula. I didn't draw out the entire formula, but like it shows up three times, but there is one more term that I didn't show, N1 uh, XORed with M3, or M4 rather. And just to make it more clear, I guess I will draw out that last term because I know a few of you guys are a little on the lazy side and you can't kind of, you know, extrapolate the rest of the formula. But anyways, we can see that this shows up four times. So another thing that you know about XOR, at least you need to know, is that the order that we do these actually doesn't matter. Just like how when you have numbers and you have five plus four plus three, if I were to rearrange the order and make this three plus five plus four, it does not change the result. It's always going to be the same. And that's exactly true for XOR as well. I'm not going to get into the details of why, but that's how it is. So you tell me if N is going to show up four times, then can't we just cancel out all four of those terms? It shows up an even number of times. In fact, we can actually cancel out N2 as well. It's also going to show up an even number of times. And same thing with N3. So actually, we don't need any of the terms from the first array. And now you can kind of arrive at the intuition that if both arrays are of even length, then the result is always going to be zero because all of the terms are going to cancel each other out. Right now, that's not the case because M, like this array is of length four, but this length is three, which is odd. So that tells us that M here, it's going to show up one, two, three times. So M1 XORed with M1 XORed with M1. Two of these are going to cancel each other out. We'll be left with a single term for M, and that's obviously going to be the case with every single one of these. So the actual result to this problem is just going to be like all of these terms XORed together. So we can solve this one at least in O of M time. It's possible that both arrays were of length odd. So like if I got rid of this term, then we would say, okay, each of these terms is going to need to be XORed together. And each of these, since they show up an odd number of times, is going to need to be XORed together as well. So I guess in the worst case, the time complexity would be N plus M. Now, with everything that I explained, you should be able to code up the solution. If you can't code up the solution after like all of this explanation, then it's possible you didn't fully understand it. Let's think about how we would code it up. Like I said, if this array is of length even, we can skip all of these terms. But if this array was of length odd, we would include all of these terms in the result. Same thing in the opposite way. If this array is length odd, then we're going to include all of these terms. If it's even, then we're going to skip all of these terms. So we're just going to have a couple if statements. Now let's code it up. 
So let me clean this up. And I'm gonna start with my result initially at zero, and then that's what we're going to return. And so the couple if statements I was talking about, I'm gonna check if the length of the second array is odd. So you could do that in multiple ways, mod it by two, and then check if the result is one. You could also, I think, do this anded with one either way. And you could probably even get rid of this like equal term, but I think it's fine to be explicit in this case. But then if it's of length even, then we're gonna include every term from the first array. So I'm gonna say n in nums one, and then result XOR it with n. Same thing with the opposite arrays. So nums one is length odd, then take every number in the second array and XOR it with the result. So that's the entire code. Let's run it. And you can see it works and it's pretty efficient. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io for a lot more and I'll see you soon.